So guys, it is rumbling in the US, in Hawaii. So one of the world's most active volcanoes, as you might have heard, has erupted again, Kiaulea. And we know that past eruptions at Kilauea have been proven to be quite destructive. So heavy lava flow destroyed more than 600 properties back in 2018 when the lava traveled from the Kiaulea summit to the ocean. Yesterday, lava began to emerge from the summit of this famous volcano located at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the Big Island of Hawaii. And that happened around 12.30 a.m. local time. And it has prompted the U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS, to raise the alert level to red. So that's a high alert level. Red alert signifies that a volcanic eruption is imminent because they knew there was a heavy, heavy earthquake swarm. More than 400 earthquakes occurred over the past 24 hours, with most of them occurring between noon on Sunday and then midnight Monday. And that happened just shortly before this eruption began. And we know this, guys, if you're watching my channel on a regular base, you know these earthquake swarms, if they happen in such a magnitude, so many at once, that if you look at the earthquakes maps, usually you have one dot here, one dot here, and then it starts and they're coming, dot, 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 so that you see a big, big cluster of earthquakes. That's a sign that underneath magma's on the move. And then it depends on the warming time the, the warning time between this earthquake swarm and the actual eruption and that depends on how far magma needs to travel from a magma chamber to a potential eruption site and that defines the warning time does it have to grind a lot to get where it wants to go then it takes a little longer the largest earthquake that we have seen in this earthquake swarm had a magnitude of 4.1 and that happened at around 9.12 p.m. on Sunday. So there was warning time because this earthquake swarm was stretching over a time frame of roughly 24 hours. Most eruptions of Kiaulea are not really dangerous unless it's flowing into water. So due to this remote location of this eruption, and you see a map here where this eruption is located, and you see past lava flows here um, in, in purple, um, the primary hazards of this eruption are the airborne hazards related to gas emissions and if it throws tephra rocks, a little volcanic rocks into the air, they can flow quite fast and it depends on if there's a lot of wind, then it can be thrown further away. So usually the current volcanic activity is restricted to this summit region and no lava is visible from accessible areas in the park. So it's not a tourist eruption, you can't really see anything. So if you look at this here, the eruption occurred about a mile south of the Kiolea caldera and north of the Kua'i fault system and Helena Pali Road. That's within Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park, but it is in a closed up rugged area. So not an area where we usually see many tourists walking around. So that red circle here, that is where these fissures are and have began. And if we look at them, wow, it looks like as if this was the fissure that opened in Iceland just a few days ago, right? It looks really, really similar. So by the way, if you're interested in what's going on in Iceland, check out my channel and subscribe to my channel. Then you get all the latest news also about what's going on in Italy. So the last time they have seen a similar eruption as the one that is happening right now there, it's quite a while ago. That was in 1974. And you can also see the lava flow that was created by the 1974 eruption. So this fissure that we're dealing with right now, it's more than a mile long. The lava has varied in height and in vigor. So how high it's going and, and, and the intensity of with what the lava flow comes out of there. So in some areas, it was spewing up to 65 feet. And gas, of course, that was, of course, being emitted from that fissure. 
One thing that we need to note, the 1974 eruption was far more voluminous and has covered a much larger area so far. We don't know what's going to happen with this eruptions, but experts think it won't last very long, maybe a few days, and then it will die down. Similar to what has happened to Iceland since November 10th, just the last eruption that they had there took about six weeks. And now we have another one there and we have to see how long this one will take. So, but with this one, they don't think uh, maybe a couple days, maybe we'll continue for a few more hours. But you never know, guys, with these volcanoes, right? It is hard to make predictions. That's quite an interesting volcano. It's a Kilauea is an active shield volcano in the Hawaiian Islands. And it is located, you can see it here on the map, um, along the southwestern shore of Hawaii Island. And it is fairly old. It is between 210,000 and 280,000 year, years old. And it grew above sea level about 100,000 years ago. And since people started settling on these islands, it has been the most active volcano of the five uh, volcanoes that together form this island and have built this island. And it's not only one of the most active in Hawaii, it's one of the most active volcanoes on Earth. The fissures we're dealing with right now, they're south of the main caldera. So since we've seen a very liquid and fast flowing lava in Iceland, and since this fissure looks similar, the lava is similar. It is quite liquid. So it's not as liquid as the lava in Iceland, but similar. Yesterday, they thought the eruption was already over, but then they changed their mind. It seems it took a small break and then it started to continue again. So usually if there is an eruption that's southwest of this summit caldera, these eruptions are known to have a quite a short lifespan. So we will have to wait and see what this one is doing. They have measured the sulfur dioxide emissions from that eruption and they were around 15,000 tons per day. Um, then later today, it has decreased a little bit to 12,000 tons per day, but these are very, very high values. So they indicate that there is still far more magma in the ground than has been released through this lava that is coming out. So there could be the chance that this eruption could grow bigger again or another fissure might open. It's just, we don't know. The scientists don't know. It's, it's a wait and see game. They did record volcanic tremors that were associated with fluid movements. That was recorded by the seismometers that are in place in this area and at the summit caldera. Um, but they have slightly reduced in intensity right now as well. Overall, the earthquake activity has decreased significantly since this eruption began, of course, because now there is a magma tunnel. The magma did form and grind that tunnel and now it has a good flow path. So that's why there's not that many earthquakes anymore because basically now the road is paved, the piping is in place. So with this eruption and with these earthquakes, there has been a formation of a large fracture system that has developed in the area around the active fissure that is actually spewing the lava out. So this has happened over the past few days and it extends well beyond the westernmost active fissure that we're having right now. So that suggests that magma somehow was making its way underground at a very shallow depth as far as to the east side of Mount Nike. And that's where the recent earthquake swarms occur. So the fracture system has opened in the vicinity of an area where already we have seen a major magma intrusion in the form of like a magma tunnel, an underground magma tunnel that has formed on January 31st. 
2024. And if you compare this to what's happening in Iceland on November 10th last year, so there was a magma intrusion. That means magma is moving underground, but it's not breaking up to the surface and creating a lava flow. So in Grindavik in Iceland, there was a 15 kilometer long magma dike formed on November 10th. And since then, almost every month, we have seen an eruption somewhere along that original magma dike. So from a deeper magma chamber, there was a flow into that dike and from there it was feeding eruptions into that dike again. And it looks like something not the same, but something comparable is happening here. On January 31st this year, there was also a, a quite heavy earthquake swarm and everyone thought, oh, we will see an eruption right now. But an eruption didn't occur. But also, I have to compare this to Iceland. Although there wasn't an eruption, this was a very, very powerful intrusion where a lot of magma was intruded into that long dike. And these earthquakes were the most destructive for the town of Grindavik, where the most cracks and fissures opened, so the most disrupting. So it doesn't mean that if you see an eruption that this is the most destructive for the areas and settlements around it. Even if something happens underground, this can be quite intense. So guys, that was a quick update about what's going on in Hawaii right now. I'll keep you updated about all the other stuff as well. So expect more videos to come out shortly. I hope you're having a good day, morning, evening, wherever you are, stay safe. Um, I'll see you soon, I hope. Please like this video and if you're new here, subscribe. Thank you very much, bye-bye.